Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. Are you, are you sick of looking at Netflix and you don't know what to watch? So many movies out there, you don't know which ones are good, which ones were bad. You curious about what's out there? I'm Joey Powers. I'm Don Trettler. This is the best pictures. The ones you don't want to miss. Hit it. Say hello to my little friend. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Winners go home and prom queen. English, mother do you speak it? Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I don't deserve this. Deserves got nothing to do with it. No sequel for you. Hi, and welcome to another edition of The Best Pictures, the last The Best Pictures. I'm one of your hosts, Joey Powers. Hey, and I'm your other host, Don <clears throat> Trettler. Welcome to the show where we're going to talk about baseball, at least for me, probably for the last time. So <laughs> I, there was obviously a disappointing weekend at the box office. But before we get to that, we got to what talk. the hell happened, man? The Mets. Mets won 101 games this season. And then they, they, they lost. They got swept by the Braves which knocked them out of contention for the division title. So they had to play for the wild card, and they lost in the wild card round. Two games, two games to one. It was ugly. The, uh, the amazing pitching that they had, Max Scherzer, Jacob deGrom. De DeGrom was decent on Saturday, wasn't he? He was all right. I think he won the game. Yeah, Sch Scherzer was terrible on Friday, though. Yeah, he got, he got he, knocked around. I think he has the best stuff probably in baseball right now. I mean, I, I, mean, I think they both do. They're 1A one and 1B, one you know. And then, then Chris Bassett on Sunday, and all three of them, I think all three of them pitched against Atlanta, too, and they got knocked around by Atlanta as well. So the amazing pitching that was supposed to carry them through to the World Series didn't work. And what was the so guy, you can tell I'm a little bitter, people. What was the guy? Was it Musgrave? Joe that, Musgrave. Yeah, he pitched well. How many innings did he go? I think he went. He went deep. He went seven or eight innings. Okay. I'm That's, trying to think if he. They just brought the close. They might have just brought the closer in in the ninth. That's it. I honestly up seven nothing. I wouldn't have even done that. I would have just brought some nobody and just give him that. Did you watch some of the game? Not yesterday's. I did watch Friday's game. They they while during the game they had him checked on the mound for foreign substances. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. I think it was just some gamesmanship. Probably. It really didn't have anything to do with anything he was right. doing. He just, yeah. he pitched an amazing game. He had a really great game. I've never, I've never heard of him. Joe but, Musgraves? Yeah. But the thing is, I don't really follow the National League as much because I'm a Yankees fan. So, right. You know, and even if I did, I probably wouldn't really follow the Padres because they're not like a big market, you know. And, no. You know, I mean. They're, they're the only like major sports team now in San Diego because the Chargers left for Los Angeles. Right. And the uh, Clippers left for Los Angeles, right? Which must make them, I would think, you know, they would make a rivalry against the Dodgers and everything. Do they have like a famous zoo out there? Oh yeah, it's great. <laughs> so, I mean, if that's their claim to fame. Well, but, and SeaWorld. I mean, the Yankees start Tuesday night. We got what are they called? Guardians. Guardians. We start with them on Tuesday night, tomorrow night. So. Uh, well, how do you feel? You feel confident? And this is exactly, this is what you and I, like I probably said this a month or two ago, the Yankees were starting to like dip right. for a while. And I said, well, it's better to go cold now than it is to go cold at the end, at the end of, the of the season. season. Right. And at the time, the Mets were red hot. Mm -hmm. And I said, I hope, hope they can stay hot. Didn't happen. So how angry do you get when your team loses? When you think, cause you, I feel like you thought you guys had a legit shot. Against the Dodgers they, to get to, to get to the World Series. Yeah, I think I don't I don't know what their record is against the Dodgers, but I think they have a winning record against the Dodgers this year. And um, they beat the Dodgers in 2015 to get to the World Series. They went through them, so yeah, I don't see why they couldn't beat them. But they just got cold. They didn't hit one hit yesterday. Yeah, I mean when the Yankees lose, I act like a little baby. I get so mad. I break stuff. I I just I'm. I'm not un unconsolable, I guess the word is. I'm I think sure. I'm getting used to it. just if, if you're a Met fan, you're just used to disappointment. You're used to your teams just being like 
crappy and letting you down. 2007. Well, I get it. I'm a Falcons fan, so I kind of get where you're going from there. Speaking of which, I've been watching that seven-part series that I was telling you about. Yeah, I'm not going to watch it. Which is kind of interesting. <laughs> I, I lived it. I don't need to watch it. I just I, got through the Michael Vick years. Uh, that was brutal. That was brutal. I mean, he just signed that huge contract. I mean, there's a famous uh, scene where uh, Arthur Blank's wheeling him out onto the field in his wheelchair after he tore his ACL or whatever, after he had just signed a $130 million contract. And then there's obviously the interview at the uh, draft where he lies to the commissioner about it. Um, is that is that? I'm trying to remember. Is that exactly how it went down? Did Vic lie to the commissioner? Or I don't remember how. Oh, I what, didn't see anything about because that. Because there's something happened at the draft, or it was leaked that Michael Vic had a dog fighting ring. Oh, um, and that's that's where it all came to surface. They kind of they kind of glanced over and just kind of got into. They really started to talk about the coach that they hired specifically. To run an offense for Michael Vick, you know, God, they, know. they had gotten rid of, I'm trying to think of who it was, they gotten rid of, um, um, June Jones, the guy that was the son, the son of the other, the, oh, uh, Jim Mora, Jim Mora, Jim Mora Jr., yeah, right, so they just got rid of him, yeah, because they didn't like his offensive schemes, I'm trying to think who's after and him, and they hired the guy from, um, oh, Bobby Petrino, yeah, yeah, Bobby Petrino, yeah, and he did a, he did a Nick Saban, and just bolted for the NFL. Right. You know? Um, and then yeah. he bolted from them. Yeah. No, that's what I mean. He bolted from them to go back to college. Yeah. But, uh... So they were getting into the whole Bobby Petrino thing. Mm -hmm. And basically said that, you know, he was hired to, to work with Michael Vick. And then Michael Vick got the conviction for the dog. Yeah. Uh, dog fighting And the thing. Falcons severed all ties with him. And then he came back a few years later and got comeback player of the year with the Eagles. Had a monster year. I mean, guy was talented. I mean, he had a rocket, rocket for an arm. He was fast as hell. Yeah, um, that's very, what they were very saying. athletic. But I mean, that just you can't do stuff like that. I mean, that's just terrible. You know, I mean. Yeah. So anyway, so my baseball season's over. Your baseball season is going to go on. You got to say the Yankees have to be favored over the Guardians. Oh, uh, they definitely, especially being at home. Um, what really surprised me is Seattle. Seattle. You know, because I, I thought Toronto was pretty tough. And then Seattle just hasn't been to the playoffs since 2001, and they just went in and took care of business. Yeah, I'll certainly be rooting for them over the Astros. Yeah, yeah, me too. Me too. Absolutely. I'll root for anybody over the Astros because I know if we go to Houston, we're going to end up losing that series. They just, we just can't beat them for some reason. I don't know what it is. Right. Um, and now you got some rivalries in the National League because it's going to be Padres playing the Dodgers and Phillies playing the Braves. So that's going to be, that should be kind of exciting. Not that I'm going to watch it. Now the Phillies took both games, right? That didn't go three. No, they just they just took care of the Cardinals. Now the Mets and Padres were the only one that went three. Everybody else got got beaten two games. That's crazy. And I think the Phillies came made, had a massive comeback they in did. the ninth inning. They did because they well they scored six runs in the ninth inning. Yeah, yeah, and that was Friday night's game, right? Yeah, because that game was already over by the time I got to the to the bar to watch the game with Colin. Um, but I was surprised that, I, I was surprised that the, the Cardinals lost. You know, because they're just one of those, like, mainstays. Once they get in the playoffs, they just seem to just keep, yeah. keep going. It would have been you know? an exciting story to see Albert Pujols. Yeah, because this is definitely his last year, right? Like, there's no... Yeah, he's retiring. Yeah, and Miguel Cabrera, too, right? He's This is his last year. Yeah, yeah so it would have been a nice story. I never really cared for the guy, but you got to respect he's one of the best players of all time. Yeah. There's never been any... Suspicion of him taking any performance enhancing drugs. I've never heard it. So, I mean, I don't think we've actually had a show since Aaron Judge actually passed Roger Maris, but there are a lot of people in the baseball world that consider him the true home run king because all the other, the other three that have more than that all are, you know, linked to steroids. Oh, right. That's Barry true. Barry Bonds, Sammy Sosa, and Mark McGuire. Yeah. You know, so, and, uh, because I think I was talking to Colin about it, and um, you know, the this uh, company in California, an auction company, offered the guy who caught the ball two million dollars, and I still I still haven't heard what, what he's doing with it. Have you heard anything about it? No, because it just seems like it just kind of died. So, and that's a obviously that's a lot of money, but I mean, so they obviously feel like 
you know, that ball is significant because, I mean, Roger Maris, his son, even said, you know, we feel like Aaron Judge holds the record for the, the most home runs in a season of any player because he, you know, I mean, Judge, he's just a big guy. You know, I mean, he's always been big ever since he came in the league, but he's always crushed home runs. Um, but I, I certainly don't think Aaron Judge has has done anything uh, suspicious or anything like that. He's just big and strong, and he's a good hitter. And he's got a good swing, yeah. He does, yeah. You know, and, he, and I mean, I will say what, his, what, what his was his player, batting average? I bet he had a decent batting average. Last time I checked, it was three fourteen. But they didn't. Once he hit the uh, once he hit sixty two, he didn't play again. Oh, so. I don't believe he won the triple crown. I don't think he won average. I think um, I think it might. You know, I never actually looked, but I feel like that would have been a headline if he did. So I think Bogarts must have uh, passed him because there I thought were... that other guy for the Twins. What was it, Arcia? I thought I thought he was pretty high up there in batting average as well. And uh, yeah, and I think Aaron Judge. I think he stole some bags too. I mean, he's pretty... He, he probably didn't get 20, but, I mean, he probably got somewhere between 10 and 20. Probably, yeah. Um, all right, I'm getting a little slow here. Uh, but, um, all right, where are we going? Well, it could bring up some movies that are coming out. Um, Obviously, Halloween ends. Halloween ends is That's, coming out. This and it's gonna It'll probably blow away anything else. Yeah. They said this is really the start of the fall season, really. Halloween ends, and then I think uh, Black Panther Wakanda Forever is, I think, second weekend of November. I want to say November 11th, possibly. Do you have something in between there? Uh, I didn't see that. I only really wrote down this week's, which I think is interesting. What did you say? Oh, Black Adam's oh, Black next Adam. week. Yeah, Black Adam's right. next weekend. Well, I think this is, it's kind of interesting that they decide to open... Uh, some of these other movies against Halloween ends. So there's a movie about Emmett Till that opens this week. But see, some of these, maybe, I don't know. See, I don't know if they're open at theaters or not. Then there's another one called She Said about the whole Harvey Weinstein. Oh, really? Who's thing. in that? Um, Do you remember? It wasn't anybody huge. But, I mean, there were, there, there's some name actors, but not huge. You know, not like, I have to really think about who, who the heck it was. But I thought that's interesting that they would open that movie against Halloween ends. You know, it's almost like they don't want people to see it. Also, The Whale opens. Uh, Darren Aronofsky's movie, The Whale. When is that? I thought open. that was until December. I think it opens this week. I wrote it down on the as opening, opening this weekend. Yeah, you're right. Ar Arnez, is that his name? Arnez. From Minnesota? Yeah. He ended up hitting 316. Judge ended up at 311. So he didn't win the Triple Crown. But still, 311 is pretty good for someone who had 62 home runs. Yeah. You know, that's really impressive. So, yeah, some interesting stuff come, coming up. Like I say, and I don't know. I don't know. Some of these could be on, like, Showtime or... Mm -hmm. Yeah, or, or Peacock or whatever. Yeah, I yeah. don't, and I don't know. But uh, there's a movie called Armageddon Time that looked pretty interesting with um, Anne Hathaway. Okay. And Anthony Hopkins in a bit part about a, I guess they're like a Jewish family. And they, um, uh, the kid becomes friends. He goes to a school and he becomes friends with, uh, with a black kid. And somehow they end up, I didn't see exactly what, what, what the deal was, but they throw the, they throw the kid out of school. Um, and he has he goes to an, like an all white school and he tries to remain friends with the with the black kid and the other kids friends are making fun of him and stuff. And uh, so I guess it's a story of you know being able to like stand up for uh, for doing the right thing type of movie. It looks interesting to me and it got I think it got like a six point five on IMDb. That's not bad. Yeah, hey, I've been paying it's attention. Watchable. Yeah. A lot of these movies look like they're going to be watchable. Uh, uh, open open this past weekend weekend was uh, Amsterdam, and it got some bad reviews. Um, IMDb it just moved up over the over the Mendoza line. Yeah, I checked it was six point two. Yeah. I, I didn't. It was at five point eight. Like, I watched the trailer. It just doesn't. It doesn't look like something I would want to watch. Yeah, you know? I think they said there's. I don't know. I'm trying to think of how to describe. 
they just felt like it was kind of a muddled mess. And it has a really good cast, too. It has an outstanding cast, you know. And David O. Russell, generally, he has some pretty good movies, you know. I guess it just didn't come together. You know, I actually watched last night for the first time in a while. It's Walk the Line. Yeah. That's a really good movie. I, I still can't believe Joaquin Phoenix didn't win Best Actor for that. I thought who was, beat him out? Uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman for Capote. Oh, but you haven't seen that movie. I have not seen that movie. I wonder if we have it. At the, I, I think it might be at the library. I'm going to go. I'm going to have to check the next time. Let me write this down. So Alex thinks that you and I should screen a movie in the other room because he has like Netflix and they have that big screen and stuff like that. He thinks uh -huh. we should do a show where we're screening part of a movie and talk about it. Well, so that's just something to think about, you know? Yeah. I wish we could review movies. I wish we could like see these movies in advance and then talk about them afterwards. And that, we've done it a couple of times, but. Well, we could do that if we end up going to see Halloween Kills this weekend. You know, maybe we can then talk about it on Monday yeah, and then talk about it next week, you know? Because I definitely, I really want to see that because that, that's my favorite horror series of all the horror movies. Um, and it, I don't know. I just, I, I'm a big horror movie fan, but I, I mean, that's just, like I said, that's my favorite series. So I definitely would like to check it out. Um, but yeah, I mean, Black Panther, I think, like I said, that's November 11th. Black Adam's supposed to be pretty, they hope it's going to be pretty big. Right. Um, but I mean, everything The Rock has been in lately really, really turns to gold, you know, I mean... I think the only one that they didn't really, I mean, Baywatch was kind of a, but that was because it was rated R and it was just, it was really yeah. corny. I don't know if you saw Do you it. like The Rock? Yeah. I liked him. I, when he first became big, I had just gotten back into wrestling. So I liked him from that. I don't watch wrestling anymore. Actually, they had wrestling on at the bar the other night and I didn't really know many of the wrestlers. But um, yeah, right when he was like making his transition, um, he had a bit part in The Mummy Returns, and then they did a, a, a movie based on his character, The Scorpion King, and that was his first major release as a lead actor, The right. Scorpion King. And then, um, like, pretty much his farewell to uh, the WWE, um, right as he was leaving, he did the rundown with him and Sean William Scott and Christopher Walken and uh, Rosario Dawson. Did you see that? No. So that's, that, that's a really good movie. And that's when you could tell it's like, all right, he's not really going to be wrestling anymore. He's transitioning into something bigger. I kind of steer clear of The Rock. I really yeah. don't. I saw him in the one uh, Jumanji. Uh -huh. I saw him in the Jumanji movie. Did you watch the second one? Yet? No, I got to watch it. I was just, as I was saying it, I'm thinking, you lent me the second one. Like, I, like, I, I, like I said before, though, it's not a bad movie, but it's nothing compared to the first one. Yeah. But you didn't. You said you haven't seen Jungle Cruise. No, that was supposed to be um, good. I watched that. I liked it. I mean, and anything with Emily Blunt, I'll watch anyway. That's right. She's a cutie. Um, but like, uh, Ram I think Rampage, the one with the ape, it, it was just weird. Yeah, I didn't see it. And Skyscraper was hard for me to watch because I'm so scared of heights that even though it's fake, it's still... But San Andreas wasn't bad. That's He's him. done some comedies, right? He was in uh, the sequel to Get Shorty, uh, uh, Be Cool. Uh, it's actually a pretty funny character because he plays like a, a gay body, like a, a bouncer type guy, a bodyguard, whatever. And it, it's just funny, you know. Um, Wasn't he in uh, some of the Fast and the Furious movies too? Or am I confusing was, him with someone else? He was in a couple and then him and Vin Diesel got into a pretty bad, I don't know if it was actual physical or what, but so they did a spinoff called uh, Fast and Furious Presents Hobbs and Shaw. Right. And uh, it was him and Jason Statham. But then I, apparently Vin Diesel wanted to try to make up with him and get him to come in for like part 10 or whatever. And The Rock wants nothing to do with him. So. Wow. But one so year. he holds a grudge. Yeah. So one year, like 2018, 2019, something like that, he was the highest grossing actor that year. He made like 67 or $68 million. Huh. You know? So, I mean, because he had, he had, like one year he had a bunch of huge hits, you know, because a lot of his movies have been really big. He's a, he's a guy I just I don't tend tend to see and sometimes when people have like other stuff that goes on, people don't like him. Now I just happened to see a movie. Um, you're gonna know what it is. It was it's a uh, with Mark. It was Mark Wahlberg, um, Joaquin Phoenix. Oh, we on the night? Yeah. Oh, and and Robert Duvall. Yeah. You've probably brought this up before. And Eva You've Mendes. seen this movie, right? Yeah. 
And Eva Mendes, yeah. yeah. Now, a lot of people would say, oh, I don't like Mark Wahlberg, but I just happened to come across that movie today, and I just said, That's, that looks really interesting. But I kind of like Mark Wahlberg. i got to okay. say, I've seen enough of his movies. I'm kind of not, I'm certainly not down on the guy. I know he, I don't know how big a draw he is. He's probably a pretty, pretty I decent draw. I think he's draw. decent. I think he's a decent draw, yeah. I'm not huge on him, but I don't dislike him. Um, I think he's good in that movie. Um, he did one called uh, President's Day. Not not President's Day, Patriot's Day. Yeah. About uh the um Boston Marathon bombing. Right. And that was that was really good. Um He, he did one about the football player. It's called Unbreakable. Oh, Invincible. Invincible. Yep, that was good. And like, you know, he did um The Perfect Storm, which was a good movie. I really like that. And he Fe- was in Boogie Nights, which I love. Bo- Boogie Nights is good. Fear. Have you seen Fear? No. That's him and Reese Witherspoon and uh, William Peterson. That's a really good movie. So, I mean, he does get good roles and stuff. I just, I don't know. Something about him just kind of bugs me. I, yeah? I'm not really sure. I guess that's how I feel about The Rock. Like, there's something about him. I'm just like, eh, I can't, I can't get into him at all. I mean, The Rock definitely is very, like, cocky and, like, full of himself, you know. And I yeah. can see that, how that would turn a lot of people off. Um, it's probably like that with Mark Wahlberg, too. You know, sometimes people's personalities come through. Um, in their characters and stuff like that. So. I actually really did like him in The Departed. I thought he was really good in The Departed. I thought he was actually cast very well. Yeah. But I mean, I think of all the movies Martin Scorsese did, or has done, I should say, to this point, I feel like that might be the best cast movie he's had. Because, I mean, all, I mean, yeah, there's really two leads, and then a third co-lead, kind of, I would call, Jack Nicholson. Matt Damon, but, um, right? Yeah, Matt Damon and Leo, I would say, would be the two main leads, and then Jack's kind of, like, a little behind. But, I mean, Alec Baldwin was great in that, you know? I mean, uh... Kevin even, Bacon, isn't he in that, too? Not in that, no. no. I'm confusing. But, um, yeah, you know, I mean, I think Anthony Anderson's in it. He, he has a good part in it, you know? I mean, it was just very well cast, um... Uh, what's her name? Vera Farmiga was really good in it too. You know, so I, I just thought that was a very well cast movie. Um, but who's yeah, the, who's the guy that they they throw off the roof? Martin Sheen, yeah. Martin Sheen, yeah, and he okay. was he was great too. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I like Martin Sheen. I mean, everything I, Martin Sheen's in, he's quality. He was. I mean, I don't know if you ever watched The West Wing or not, but that he was great in that as the president. No, I should go back and watch that because people really enjoyed that show. Yeah, I, oh, that's a great cast. I mean, all the characters are so lovable. It's just, it's, it's a lot of fun. Well, speaking of TV shows, how, how you, how you doing with uh, Game of Thrones? I gave up. <laughs> I gave up. I, I made it to like. This two is season three, and I was like, it's not, it's not for me. It's not doing it. It's not. It's just, it's... That's funny. That's too much. Plus, I already know how it ends anyway, so it's like, why, why bother? That's funny. Yeah, I gave up a while ago. Um, I did watch Kill- Cobra Kai season five in like two days. Yeah. So now I have to wait another whole year for season six, so I'll probably rewatch seasons one through five like a hundred so, times. So I haven't gotten that far, so the... the Cobra Kai, I mean, it's still good. It's still quality into season five. And, and, and they're running out of stuff to do. I, that's what I kind of was. I yeah. kind of was getting worried about that. I thought, oh, this is getting a little cheesy. I now. mean, the way season five ends, obviously there is going to be a season six because they can't end it the way they ended it. But um, I, I, most things I read said that season six will be the conclusion of the series, and they, maybe they went a little longer. I think I think part of it was the writers. I don't think they really know how to end it. So I think they just keep extending it until they figure out what they're going to do. Because it's like, it ultimately seems like there's two fighters in each, you know, male and female, that they're going to end up fighting each other. And that's going to be how it ends, you know, because it hasn't happened for real. It's it, it's just like they make excuses why one person beat the other person. Right. Instead of just flat out just having a fair fight and the better fighter wins. I feel like that's that's what they've been doing. And now it's at the point where it's like, okay, they just need to had these people have it out, and there's just a true winner, and that's it. But I don't know if that's what's going to happen, but it does seem like they just don't know how to end it. Right. So they just keep they just keep extending it until somebody comes up with a better idea. But it keeps me entertained. I, I keep watching it, so. Well, it's kind of like Stranger Things. I kind of gave up on Str- – they- I got three seasons, I think, into Stranger Things, and I said, all right, no more. I can't I do any more. halfway se- through season two, and I gave up. I, I will say I did uh, – I toughed it out for uh, quite a while with um, the zombie one. 
Oh, Walking Dead. Walking Dead. I, I think I watched like six seasons of it before I finally was like, enough. And Brian, you remember Brian that used to work here? He's like, what happened? I was like, the same thing happens all the time. I was like, nothing changes. So, That's what I thought. I mean, know, what could what could happen on that show? Exactly. I mean, there's zombies. Yeah. But uh, that's pretty much our show. We're already out of time. Oh, boy. It goes by fast. Well, next week, maybe, uh, maybe I'll, I'll hit this list. Ten movies to see before you die. Oh, yes. I forgot about that. Yeah, and maybe we, we'll get a chance to go see Halloween Ends. And, and we, we can, can talk about we that. We can actually yeah. review it. Um, and maybe we'll be talking about the Yankees going to the ALCS. <laughs> uh, but this has been our episode of The Best Pictures, last of Best Pictures. I'm one of your hosts, Joey Powers. Hey, and I'm Don Tretler. These, These are the, are the ones, ones you don't, don't want to miss. miss. You can't fight in here. This is the war room. Here's Johnny. Go ahead. Make my day. Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it.